Listen, the people who are lost, they are in the church. The people who don't know anything about Christ, they are in the church. The people in the world are immoral, we understand. The people in the world, we see them to be people who don't know Christ or who are going to hell. But let me tell you, the, the saddest thing is that the people in the church are ignorant. They know nothing about God. Not that they don't want to know. The fact is that they don't have the teachers. They don't have the right truth. They don't have the message. So you sitting here, it should be your prayer to say, Lord, open their eyes. Let the gospel flow. In the churches across the globe, in the buses, on the street, everywhere, Lord, open doors so that we can preach the gospel, so that more people will hear this word which you have given us. Beloved, we are in the end time. Time is not on our side, and we have to preach the gospel more and more, and I need you to pray about it. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 going, we talk about the war, spiritual warfare. When you read verse 18, Paul says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication of all sin, and for me, and for me, me, the man of God, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, in chains, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Listen, you need to pray for your man of God to be able to preach the gospel. You need to pray for your man of God to have an understanding of the gospel. You need to be able to pray for a man of God that he will commit himself not to the church but to the gospel. Because many men of God today have committed themselves to the church but not to the gospel. So they are interested in the four corners of the church. And when the members come and go, all they do is to just give water down message at best some motivation and maybe some prophecy but the gospel itself is not there so many people go to church every sunday and they come back home and they have not heard anything about the gospel anything about what jesus has done anything about the truth of scripture do you get what i'm saying because the man of god doesn't know and one of the reasons he doesn't know is that one he was born in ignorance he was raised in ignorance and he is growing in what in ignorance and there is no prayer for him i prophesy over every Every man of God, that in the name of Jesus, that his or her eyes will be open. Every eye will be open. That those who preach the gospel on the street, those who preach the gospel in buses, those who preach the gospel in churches, wherever they stand, Lord will give them understanding of the gospel in the mighty name of Jesus. That they will preach the true gospel. They will preach the right gospel in the mighty name of Jesus. And I prophesy that there will be revival, revival of the gospel of Christ, revival of the gospel of Christ in the name of Jesus. He said, pray for me that utterance may be given unto me. Listen, when the man of God picks the microphone, it is not him who should talk. The utterance must be given him, and that utterance will come out. Are you getting the point? Does it mean he shouldn't learn? He should learn the scriptures. He should know the scripture because God will not give you something outside of the scripture. He will not give you something from your mind. He will give you out of what? The scripture. May God give them wisdom and understanding. So your prayer is important. Please pray for me always that I will be able to uh, to preach the gospel. That the gospel will have a free cause. When we read Acts chapter 4, and verse 29 to 31, he says that, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servant, that with all boldness they may speak, Speak thy word. By, you, see, you see the prayer they are praying? Now, there were people who were stopping the disciples from preaching the word. Are you getting the point? And they, they, they warned them that they should never speak in the name of Jesus. Peter told them that who should we listen to? Now, the Bible says, verse 19, that is Acts chapter 4, 19. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. But we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Okay, so then verse, verse, verse 21, it says, so when they had further threatened them, 
They let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. Amen. So they were threatening them. They were warning them. If you preach, we will, you will see what we will do to you. If you speak in the name of Jesus, we will do, you will see what we will do for, to you. They were even putting some in prison. It was a persecution preventing them from preaching the gospel. Do you understand? But when they went to the church to report that they are being threatened, Bible said that they raised their voice and they prayed, verse 29, and they said, Behold, Lord, look at their threatening and grant unto thy servant that with all boldness they may speak speak thy word. This was the prayer of the early church, that the gospel will be what? Will be preached with boldness. Today, when we meet to pray, what do we pray about? Today, what do we think about when you come to church and they don't lay hand on you and pray? You think you are not blessed. We are sent to preach the gospel boldly in the name of Jesus. And they prayed. And when they prayed, what did they say? 30, by stretching forth thy hand to heal. And that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child. And verse 31, listen to 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were, assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spread the word of God with boldness. 